Today, we're gonna to be checking out my real estate photography rig. I've been a real estate photographer for the last decade and I have used so many different cameras. I started out with Canon, I've used 5Ds, I've used 70Ds, the EOS M camera. You can really get from the cheapest, which was the EOS M camera, all the way up to the most expensive, a Canon 5D Mark III. And you can get great real estate photography with all of those cameras. But about five years ago, I was just getting so frustrated with how Canon was slow balling so many of these features like 4K video and shooting in log profiles that I just gave up on Canon and I switched over to Sony. And I tell you what, I have not regretted it once. And right now I'm using the A7S Mark III. Now you think, what? Real estate photography, you're only using a 12 megapixel camera? Yes. I've used high megapixel, mid, and low. No one can tell the difference between this 12 megapixel camera and the a7 III with its 24 megapixel sensor. I was a little concerned at first, wondering if I would take a hit dropping down to 12 megapixels. But with real estate photography, 90% of the time, you're getting your frame in shot as you're taking it. So you're not needing to crop in. Eventually, when you deliver the product, you're gonna be reducing the size of those files. For our MLS, we actually have to limit our file sizes to 10 megabytes. We're exporting our images at 4,500 pixels to be able to keep it down below that threshold. So typically our delivering range is between four and seven megabytes per image. The video quality that comes out of this is just bar none the best I've used in its compact form. Uh, I've even purchased the FX9 and yes, it has a wonderful uh, picture, but it is so big. I mean, just the body alone is bigger than this with a lens on it. I ended up selling it and I bought the FX3, which I'm filming on right now. And wow, these cameras paired together are phenomenal. We would film marketing videos paired the A7S III with the FX9. And if you're using Film Convert, oh my word, just throw it on and they look identical. So I was like, why am I spending $10,000, $12,000 on this FX9 when I'm using a $3,500 camera or a $4,000 camera and just getting just as good image quality. I was really concerned when I bought this tripod. I held off for a long time when this Peak Design travel tripod came out. It was all over YouTube. And I was like, yeah, that's super awesome. But me as a real estate photographer, can I compromise with such a small tripod? Can it work with the head? Yes, it can. I started out my real estate photography with a Manfrotto tilt head. It's great for beginners because you can do these real precise left right motions, but I wanted something that was smaller, compact that I could travel with. And what's amazing about this tripod is, man, it breaks down to the size of a water bottle. It comes in, it breaks down really small and it slides right into my backpack. I really was concerned about this and I didn't know if it could be a good solution for my real estate photography. And after learning its quirks, you can really work with this. I've been using this for the last year and have just loved this tripod. I was concerned like, okay, the legs, does it get tall enough? I was really concerned that this gooseneck right here wasn't gonna give me enough reach to be able to get high enough. I'm 5'10", and to do those curb shots, I really need to get up to my eye level to get a good perspective on the home. But, I mean, I, for years, I was using uh, man photo tripods, and they were the whole, you know, twist. Man, they just, wear out and give out on you. I was just getting really annoyed. I was replacing so many tripods and the little internal pieces in the plastic would give out. And so I was like, okay, I'm ready to switch it up and try some clamps instead of the twist. So this is fully extended and right here gets me up to my eye level. When I'm doing my curb shots, I can perfectly line this up, eye level, set it up, and get my shots. Now, I was pretty concerned about switching over to a ball head, but what's really nice is this camera on the screen, it has your balance and tilt, and we've got a bubble balance built in on this tripod head. And the other thing that pushed me over the edge, once I figured out that you could actually remove this and put on 
any head you want to in this tripod. That does defeat the purpose because on the Manfrotto head, it's got these long knobs that stick out and they can just get in the way. And so I was like, okay, let's just give this a shot. Let's see if I can make this ball head work the way I need it to. And what's nice is it's got, you know, tension in the tightener. If you need to leave the tension up, then you can make adjustments as you need to. With the leveler on the screen and the bubble, man, you can just nail your verticals every single time. With the ball head, I've discovered that I can make all these subtle 360 degree motions with my camera. Before, I was having to use, okay, let's loosen up and let's adjust this side. Let's adjust this side. I was finding that I can actually get my shot faster with this tripod than I was with my Manfrotto rig that I was using previously. So with this rig, I've got my tripod, super compact, and then we're jumping up to the lens. This is the G Master 16 to 35 f 2.8. This is the nicest ultra wide zoom lens that Sony makes. This was tough for me to stretch for because I always had the mentality of, okay, let's just get the bare minimum to get the job done. But with how good cell phones are getting, you really need a premium quality kit to separate yourself from cell phones. Look for used gear. I look for all of my lenses used if I can help it. I found this lens online and saved about $500 off of the list price. It came in mint condition. You know, I used to shoot with the Sigma 14 to 24 f 2.8. Now that is a chunky lens. I mean, even heavier than this G Master. And it's a great lens. So jumping out to 14 millimeters, it can make a big difference in those tiny rooms, but you gotta balance your feedback. For me, I really love 15 millimeters, the way that looks for photographing a room to make it look big. But at 14, I felt like it was borderlining becoming deceiving. I was getting feedback from some clients saying, man, you made this room look so much bigger than what it actually is. And they were getting some complaints from people coming look at the home yeah, the photos look amazing, the room looks huge, but it doesn't look true to life. So I decided I need to adjust my gear so I'm representing this real estate in its proper form. And 1635 is just the sweet spot, you know? At 24, when we're doing detail photography for our clients, it just isn't quite zoomed in enough. And 35 2.8, you can get some great bokeh. Get zoomed in, shooting those light fixtures, countertops, faucets, all those details that you need to grab. Another handy piece about having it in a zoom lens, especially at 2.8, is you don't have to run out to your car, grab a different lens, come back in, and shoot details. You simply just switch over your settings, and boom, you're ready to start taking detailed photos. Now, I typically shoot 80% of my real estate photography in HDR. So on my camera here, I've got memory banks set up. So number one is my real estate photography settings. Number two is my quick grab video settings. And number three is my S-Log3 settings. So I can get the most dynamic range. And then for M, I go into manual mode to get all my detail photography. So I've got these quick settings set up. So when I'm there shooting, then I switch over and I'm ready to start going. So with 16 to 35, I have just loved it. Now, this is such a great compact setup up between the a7s3 the g master 16 to 35 and the peak design travel tripod this has been my favorite setup that i have used in the last decade it's maybe not the lightest like when i was using the a6500 and with the aps-c lenses yes oh my goodness it's so light just feather light but when it comes to video the compromises that you had to deal with with low light this well makes up for the price and the weight difference. Because in reality, this is still a pretty light setup. Before, when I was having to go to the chiropractor to like work on my wrists and my back because of the weight of the 5D Mark III and my massive Manfrotto tripod I was using, I haven't had to worry about that stuff in a long time. If you have any questions for me, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to answer any questions you might have. Some of our shooters here at Nested Tours use Canon stuff and Sony stuff. Let me know what you're shooting with out there. I'd love to dialogue with you. Thanks for checking out this video. Hit the subscribe button. And in the next video, we're going to dive in and look at all of my camera settings for real estate photography. I'll see you in the next video.